be together. Wonderful, wonderful Shabbat to be together and to have our kindergartners here. And people who are here in our sanctuary in Bel Air might notice that there are some parents who are very proud <laughs> and some grandparents who are very proud and they want to document the moment. And we let you do that for the first two songs. But now I want you to put your phones away and I want you to rely on my dear friend Andre right there. He's going to make sure that you get fantastic we're in 4K, are we not, Andre? 4K <laughs> footage. I don't know what that means, but I know that it's very high quality. So you're going to get great video of this entire service. And right after the service, it will already be on our YouTube page. So you don't need to do any more of that. I just want you to be present and enjoy it. We are joined by our amazing Stephen Wise Temple Band. We have our cantorial intern, Andrew Pascal. And let me tell you, tonight is really, really special, not just because the kindergartners are helping to lead this service, but also because this is our Founders Weekend. Why? Because Rabbi Stephen Samuel Wise, before he was a synagogue, he was a person. <laughs> Thank you. I, I wanted to get a little bit of a laugh. Yes, there's actually two synagogues, but this is the most important one. You hear that? Stephen Wise Free syn Synagogue in New York. This is the one. <laughs> Before he was a synagogue, he was a person, and I have a beautiful, this is kind of a picture, we call this a caricature. Somebody took a picture of him, and then this was on the cover of a magazine, and it was published in 1948. Well, Stephen Samuel Wise was born in 1874, died in 1949, and he was a teacher to our Rabbi Zeldin. And when Rabbi Zeldin founded our synagogue, he said, I want to name it after one of my heroes, one of my teachers. And kindergartners, you can think of your teachers who are going to come up in just a moment and light our Shabbat candles. And you could think maybe someday you'll start a synagogue and you'll name it after one of your teachers. But let me read you, and especially grown-ups, I want you to hear this. Because if you don't know who our founder was, Rabbi Zeldin, go to our website. You can learn more about him. And if you don't know who our namesake was, Rabbi Stephen Wise, you really should, because you'll be even prouder to be part of our temple and our school when you know more about the man who was one of the great leaders of the 20th century. And this is what his dear friend, Rabbi Joachim Prince, who was another rabbi who was originally born in Europe, in Germany, Rabbi Prince was very famous because he spoke right before Martin Luther King Jr. at the March on Washington in 1963. And this is what Rabbi Prince said about his friend, Rabbi Wise, when Rabbi Wise died. He said, Stephen Wise loved the Jews. 
This love was axiomatic. He loved his people, regardless of where they came from and who they were. He had nothing of the arrogance of some of our Jewish leaders. While he laughed good-naturedly about the schnorers and the machers, he loved them too. He was often outsmarted by those who knew the tricks and the ropes better than he did. He was not a good politician, but he loved the Jews, and his love never wavered. He was a glowing heart, and it beat for many. He devoted his life to trying to rescue Jews during the Holocaust. He devoted his life to trying to see the birth of the state of Israel, which he saw. And if you read my Kavanaugh this morning, he knew Theodore Herzl. He met Theodore Herzl. And so what a beautiful thing that our congregation, founded by Rabbi Isaiah Zeldin, a man who knew Rabbi Wise, and Rabbi Wise was a man who knew Theodore Herzl. And that's our through line. That's our connection to the glorious, glorious past that led, led to the creation of the state of Israel. I want to acknowledge that we have shlichim who are here from all over Israel who are with us tonight. We're so grateful to each and every one of you for your service to our communities. But of course, I won't name names, but we know who the best shaliach is. We, 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 we know. So we're going to have a wonderful service together. We're going to hear some more about Rabbi Stephen Wise. We're going to have a great story that's good for all ages, but especially appropriate for our kindergartners. And now we're going to invite some of our teachers to come forward and light the candles. So Carly and Melanie, Michelle, Maddie, Lisa, and Liza, please come over here. Let's all stand up. And those of you joining us from home, thank you so much for being part of our online community. Light your Shabbat candles right along with us as we bring in the joy, the beauty, and the light of Shabbat. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kiddushanu b'mitzvotav V'tzivahanu Lehadlik ner Lehadlik ner Shel Shabbat You may all be seated. We're going to continue on page 13. Shir Chadash. Our psalms ask us to sing a new song. And what better way to sing a new song when, when we are joined by the voices of our kindergartners? invite you to turn to page 20. We're going to continue with L'cha Dodi, a 500-year-old poem about the beautiful relationship between Shabbat and the Jewish people and God.
We'll turn to page 28. Remain standing, please, for Baruch Hu, our call to worship. invite you, if you feel comfortable doing so, please close your eyes. It's a tradition to do that when we say the words of Shema so that we can focus all of our intention on the truth of these six words, that there is one God, maker of heaven and earth, and that means that we are all children of the one God. And that means that all humanity is somehow connected and all of matter is somehow connected. The entire universe is one. Let us declare that truth together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai
may be seated. According to Jewish tradition, when our ancestors arrive at the Sea of Reeds, they're paralyzed with fear. Before them lay waters filled with the unknown, with uncertainty and doubt. Behind them lay absolute certainty, Egypt and all of its misery. And yet, the silent siren of certainty still beckoned to our ancestors. For us too, it could be tempting to look upon the unfamiliar and the unknown with suspicion. But as our ancestors discovered, it is only when we wade into the unknown that we discover freedom. Each and every generation, including our own, has its sea of reeds. For the founders of this synagogue, there was a safer choice. It was called Beverly Hills. <laughs> but rather than stay tethered to the shore, they ventured into the waters of uncertainty, bringing us this place, this home. Now we must discover where the waters will take us. Mechamocha begins on page 40. continue with our Hashkivenu prayer. We can find that on page 42. And what a beautiful, beautiful evening to think about Hashkivenu. We can look out the window and we see the setting sun and we have that sense of shalom that we can feel at a moment like that. And we see this sanctuary filled with families and with a community that comes together united by their love of Judaism and their love of God, their love of Israel and the people of Israel. And I feel that sense of shalom. And that's what this prayer asks for all of us and for all Israel and all humanity, that God would spread over each one of us a sukkat shalom. Let's think about how we can help be spreaders of shalom in the way we talk to each other, in the way we love each other, in the way we listen to each other, and in the way we are together. Ashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu L'shalom, L'shalom V'ha'amitenu Shomreinu L'chaim U'fros aleinu Sukkat Shomecha U'fros aleinu
ושלום, ושלום. והביתנו שומרנו לחיים. ופרוץ עלינו סוכה שלומך, ופרוץ עלינו סוכה שלומך. I invite you to turn to page 253 as we offer Amisha Berach for healing. We ask God who cared for our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. May God send healing to our loved ones. And you can think of someone near to you. You can think of your own self. You might need healing of body and spirit. We think of so many of our family members and friends who have been impacted by the terrible violence and war in Israel. And we pray for their speedy recovery. And we pray for the recovery of all people everywhere because refuah, because healing is something that each person deserves. Let's offer these prayers together. Those of you joining from home, if you want to put the name of a loved one that you're praying for in the chat, please do so. And those of you here, if you want to say the name of a loved one aloud, please do so. Let's offer our prayers for healing. Mi sheberach avoteinu mekor habracha leimoteinu. May the source of strength who blessed the ones before us Help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. <laughs> There's really nothing kindergarten and really a room full of children love more than quiet time and silence. But we practice it, right? Every Friday morning when we're together, I'm either with you or Rabbi Josh is, and, and we take a moment every single week, right? And we say that that moment that so much of our prayer is us being together in our prayers, right? Saying the same thing so that we're a community in our prayers. But then we get to a part of the prayer where we're still a community, but we each get to stand there as ourselves and we say, maybe at this point it doesn't actually matter what the person next to me is thinking or hoping for, that it's a chance for me to think about what's in my heart. And so we're going to do that tonight. You guys can be our models because you know how to do this. So you can show all the grown-ups how we do it. The Amidah in the evening is said silently. I've always thought the rabbis were sort of brilliant and maybe thinking that by the end of the day, we've had enough words. And maybe by the end of the week, we've had more than enough words. And they say, let it just be a time to breathe and to reflect and to be grateful or hopeful or anxious or joyful or all of those things. And so we're going to invite everyone as you're able to stand up and we'll take just a moment for that quiet, for that silence. And when you feel like you've said your prayers, if you want to say them in the book, they begin on page, I believe, um, 42. No, I lied. They begin on page 46. Thank you, whoever gave me that. 
Um, or you can just whisper the words in your own heart, and as you finish, you are welcome to sit down. Well, as we celebrate our 60th birthday of Stephen Wise Temple, we wanted to include one of the many melodies that was composed for our synagogue. 
And that beautiful Sim Shalom that many of us think of as the Sim Shalom was composed by Michael Isaacson and it was commissioned by Cantor Nathan Lamb for Stephen Wise Temple. So when we hear that melody, we can think about how proud we are to be part of a community that cares so deeply about bringing new music to the world. We are really pleased to share with you a special story that's not just for the kindergartners, it's not just for their siblings and their parents, but it's really for all ages. If you listen and pay attention, you're going to have a great takeaway from this story. Once upon a time, there was a jungle in which two really good friends lived. One was a monkey and the other was an elephant. And this monkey and this elephant had grown up together ever since they were born. They had gone to school together. They had learned to walk together. They had learned to play together. They laughed and made jokes and told stories that would go on forever. But one day, as sometimes happens with good friends, the two of them got into a bit of an argument. <clears throat> And the argument was about which one of them was better. I am better because I am big and strong. I can move things. I can push things. I can stomp through the jungle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're big and strong. I get it. But look at me. I am so quick and fast and small. Look how I can run and scamper. I'm quicker than you. Well, they couldn't figure out an answer to the question, and they just started bickering and bickering more and more until they decided to go to the wise, wise owl for advice. The owl, of course, is always the wisest. And so when they went to her, they said to her, Owl, owl we've, we've been, been arguing, arguing for days, days and, and we, we just cannot figure out the answer to this, this question. question. But, but we, we know, know that, that you'll know Tell us, Owl, which one of us is better? It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. Well, I'll give you the answer. But only if you both agree to accept a challenge. Here's what I need you to do. Look, do you see just across the river over there? You can see there's, there's that big, huge tree. You see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And on that big, huge tree, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's a big golden fruit. Ooh. I want you to go across the river, go to that big, huge tree, and bring me that big golden fruit. Whichever one of you is able to do it, well, then we'll know our answer. And so they both agreed that they would take on this challenge. They set off together, walking about the same pace. But the elephant started walking a little bit faster because he had longer legs and took bigger strides than the monkey did. And the elephant got to the river first. And he started wading across the river when he turned around to see how his friend, the monkey, was doing. And he saw that the monkey was not such a good swimmer. The current was too hard for him, and the river was wash, rushing by too fast. And the monkey was having such a hard time getting across the river, the elephant wasn't even sure he'd be able to do it safely. Monkey, let me help you across. Hop on my back, and I will carry you across. Oh, thank you very much. Once they got across the river, the monkey got down. And they both walked over to where that big, huge tree was, at which point the elephant decided that he was going to get that golden fruit by knocking the tree over. He bashed into the tree one, two, three, four times, but the tree wouldn't budge. The tree didn't move at all. And at that point, the elephant wasn't sure at all how he was going to get to the fruit. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work. Why don't you let me hop on your back, and then I'll climb up the tree and get the fruit. And he did just that. He jumped on the back of the elephant, and he scampered up the tree. He got the fruit. He came back down. And then they looked at each other, and the monkey hopped right back onto the elephant's back. They went back across the river. Along the way, they had to jump up and jump down and go to the left and go to the right. And once the elephant had a big itch on his nose, 
and the monkey itched it for him because he was his good friend. And they walked across the river and they went to the wise old owl and the wise old owl looked at both of them as the monkey was holding the fruit in his hand. And the owl said, Well, which one of you got this fruit for me? Well, we both did. There's no way I would have gotten across the river without Ellie here. And there's no way I could have gotten uh, the fruit without Monkey. So, I think you know the answer to your question. Who is it that's most important? Who is it that's better than the other? Neither. Oh. We are all better when we do things together. Ah. <laughs> you can take a bow, elephant and monkey. <laughs> <laughs> so this morning, we got to hear a Devar, a Devar Torah in three parts by three of our sixth graders. Um, and they talked about this incredible project of the Israelites, the building of the Mishkan, which finishes this Shabbat. And when we get to Piku Day, the end of the building of the tabernacle, we realize the message that's actually been given all throughout. It actually takes up a lot of chapters in the Torah, the building of the tabernacle. And we realize that just like our monkey and our elephant, they couldn't have built the tabernacle without all of the Israelites building it together. Everyone brought something different. They brought a talent or a, maybe someone brought a piece of string or fabric or dolphin skin, very important, or they knew how to sew or weave or weld. Those are all things. They are. They're things. I don't know what welding is, but it's a thing. And the idea is that just like elephant and monkey, we need all of that to make the tabernacle work. And this is true, not just back then when our ancestors were building the tabernacle, but today as well as we celebrate Founders Day, this community would not exist. Stephen White's temple would not exist. Why school would not exist without our founders, Rabbi Zeldin and his teacher and our namesake, Rabbi Stephen Wise and Rabbi Zeldin's spouse, Florence, and some of our founders are right here in the community with us today. And without all of you, we wouldn't be here. And so let's say, Toda Rabbah, thank you so much for working together. Let's keep working together. And let's say, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Well, what we're going to do is invite everyone in the community who is from the age of three years old all the way up to second grade, you're going, so that includes all of our kindergartners, you're going to walk out with Ms. Kleiman and some of our teachers, unless Ms. Kleiman, do you want them all just by yourself or should we have some other grown-ups come? Yeah. Reagan, so Reagan, all Reagan of our kindergartners, Reagan, all of our first Reagan graders, all of our second graders. And then everyone, except Girl Scouts, don't go Girl yeah. Scouts. Yeah, you guys Don't stay. go the Girl Scouts, everyone else. <laughs> everyone else, you can go out for a little fun with Ms. Kleiman. Just Ms. Kleiman. And we're going to continue our story. Our service? Our service, I <laughs> should say. Story. It is the story of the Jewish I people. I still have an hour. So we're going to invite the Girl Scouts to come up. Girl Scouts, now you come up. So it is National Girl Scout Shabbat. They actually call it Sabbath the Girl Scouts. And so we have some of our wise school. Come up here we to the microphones, our, Girl Scouts. We have some, you're a junior now, right? We have some of our daisies and we have some of our juniors. I know we also have some former or maybe lifelong Girl Scouts. So if anyone wants to, any of our lifelong Girl Scouts want to come up, uh, we are going to invite our Girl Scouts to offer the prayer for the United States, which is on page 258. Okay, ready, Girl Scouts? Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, guardian. Oh, guardian of life and liberty, may our nation always merit your protection. 
teaches us to give thanks for what we have by sharing it with those who are in need. Keep our eyes open to the wonders of creation. May we never be of the earth. May we never be lazy in the work of peace. May we honor those who have died in defense of our ideals. Grant our leaders wisdom and forbearance. May they go and to justice and compassion. Help us appreciate one another and respect the many reasons that we show you. May our own country be safe from infection and our country be sound in body and spirit. Amen. Thank you, Girl Scouts. We're very proud of you. Thank you for. You can all go sit down. You can go sit down. Good job. Beautifully done. Not only do we offer every Friday night a prayer for our own country, the United States, we also offer a prayer for our own country, Israel. And we're so lucky as part of the Jewish people that we can have our homeland in Israel. And once again, I think of our, oh, our, our shlichim went to help with our kids. We think of uh, all of the Israelis who are part of our community, including Malka Clement. And this morning we had Matuka Benjamin here speaking to our community. And we are part of both of these places. We are part of America and we are part of Israel. And so when our loved ones are in pain, when our loved ones are suffering, we feel that pain as well. And we composed a setting of the Achenu prayer. You can find that on the handout you got on the way in. The words are on one side. And each week we highlight 10 of the hostages and we think of their stories we pray for them and we hope that this Shabbat will be the last. We won't have to do this next week because they'll all come home. Achenu, our brothers. Achenu. Eliakim Liebman. Achotenu, our sisters. Achotenu. Oded Lifshitz. Achenu, our brothers. Achenu. Alexander Lobanov. Achotenu, our sisters. Achotenu. Shlomo Mansur. Wherever you are, whatever we must do. We are always, always there with you. We are with you, our brothers, Achenu. We are with you, our sisters, Achotenu. darkness to the light we are from with the you. darkness to the light we are from with the you. darkness to the light make everything all right we are from with the you. darkness to the light we are from with the you. darkness continue going from darkness to light when we move from our Achenu prayer to our Kiddush, which you can find on page five in your prayer book. If you're joining us from home, feel free to fill up your Kiddush cup with juice or with wine, and we'll think about some joyous things in our lives. So thank you so much, Rabbi. I wonder, is there anybody here who has a birthday this week? So from this Shabbat to next Shabbat, who's got a birthday? My brother-in-law does, Craig Hankins. So Craig, stand up. Everybody's going to end up standing up. Who does? 
Riley, it's your birthday this week? Stand up, stand up, yeah. Who else has a birthday? Happy birthday, stand up please. And we're also gonna invite to come up the room parents for our kindergarten, Lauren Felder and Odelia Lavi. Thank you so much, come up here. And if you've got a Simcha at home, you might have a birthday, an anniversary, a baby coming, a new job. Put it in the chat. Let's celebrate with you. Let's all stand up. Craig, come on up here. Come on here, my brother. Come on up here. Bore peri hagafen, Baruch atadonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kidashanu ba mitzvotav, Veratzavanu, Vishabat kod show, Biahava uvratzon, Hinchilanu, Zikaron le maase, Vereshit. Kihu yom tehila lemikra e kodesh zechelitziat mitzrayim kivanu vacharta liotanu kidashta mikol hamim veshabat kochecha. L'chaim, everybody. I'm going to invite everybody here who's under the age of bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah to come and help me open the ark. We're on page 282. <laughs> Kehol hamonam, va anachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim, lifne melech, malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu, the neemar, the haya adonai, the melech, al kol haaret. Bayom hahu, Bayom hahu, ye atonai ehad. Ushemo, Ushemo, Ushemo ehad. Please be seated. Kadisha Tom is found on page 294. If you are here because you have lost a loved one in the last seven or 30 days, you have a period of Shiva or Shloshim, I'll invite you to please rise. And if you're joining from home and you've suffered a loss, you can put the name of a loved one right there in the chat. If you want to say the name of a loved one aloud, you can do that now. And if you're in the first year of mourning the loss of a loved one, please rise. You can say the name of that loved one now. And if tonight is the yard site, the anniversary of the death of a loved one, please rise. You can say the name of that loved one aloud. And I'll invite everybody to stand in solidarity with the mourners. We'll turn to page 294, and we'll give thanks to God for the gift of these lives that we so dearly miss. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabah. Amen. Bialma divara chirute v'yamlich machute v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayed chol beit Yisrael b'galau v'zman kariv v'imru. Amen. Yehi shemei rabah mevarach le'alam u'lamei almaya. 
Viet barach, viet tabach, viet pa'ar, viet romam, viet nase, viet adar, viet ale, viet alal, shemed kudisha, brichu. Leila min kol birchata vishirata, tush bechata venechemata, damiran bealma, vimru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, vichaim alenu vel kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. O se shalom bim romav, uya se shalom, alenu vel kol Yisrael. Vimru. Amen. Amen. May the one who makes peace in the high places make peace for us and for all Israel and for all humanity. So we say together, Amen. Amen. You can be seated. A few words of thanks, and then we're going to conclude with a special prayer for our teachers. And you can find those words on page 294. Most importantly, we want to thank our kindergartners who are now outside with their teachers. We'll be reunited with them momentarily, unless you want us to keep them for the weekend. <laughs> we would be willing to do that, right, Mrs. Weiser? We're good. We could have we could have like a shul in, and we could all just sleep. It'd be great. Anyway, thanks to our kindergartners. You did such a great job, and our amazing teachers, our incredible Wise School administrative team, our shlichim, our amazing Stephen Wise Temple Band, led by our very own Dr. Tali Tadmore, Yaron, Larry, Jeffrey. We are so blessed. Andrew Pascal, thank you so much. Our incredible clergy who put together, what a story, and how <laughs> brilliantly acted. And the props were fantastic. Thank you, Rabbi Sari. Thank you, Rabbi Josh. To our crew, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to share the beauty of these kindergartners and our service with people all over the world. And Mark, as I understand it, we are now broadcasting interstellar. Is it true? <laughs> Beyond this earth, we are taking our services. So thank you to our amazing crew for everything you do. Let's all join together in these words, Kaddish to Rabbanon, page 294. We give thanks for our teachers. For our teachers and their students and the students of the students. We ask for peace and loving kindness, and let us say Amen. <clears throat> and for those who study Torah here and everywhere, may they be blessed with all they need and let us say amen we ask for peace and loving kindness and let us say amen we ask for peace and loving kindness and let us say Amen. We ask for peace and loving kindness. And let us say Amen. We ask for peace and loving kindness. And let us say Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everybody.